just took like what? 100 photos, roughly in five seconds. Today, we're taking it back, way, way back to the 1850s. Yes, you heard right, 1850s. And we'll be taking photos with a 170 year old camera. We're taking one photo takes between 15 and 20 minutes. This is the art of wet plate photography. <laughs> How's it going y'all? It is awesome to see you tune back in. So today we're diving into the old, old roots of photography. And we're gonna do some wet plate photography, also known as the Collodian process. You know, the process where you have that wooden box shaped camera. Photographer goes under that blanket thingy and then later that photo magically appears after you wash it with water or something. The cameras now are pretty darn amazing. I mean, we got cameras on our phones, cameras that can shoot high quality footage. The technology, speed and the quality we have available to us to freeze time into these photos now is amazing. Freeze time? Freeze time, yeah, that sounds cool. But at the same time, I feel like there's so much that we sort of take for granted. At least I do. So I wanted to go back to the 1850s, to the early stages of photography and understand how we got here now and understand more about these cameras and understand more what it means to take a photo. For so long, I've waited to execute this project that we are now headed to do. 45 minutes more, I gotta wait to finally being able to explore this super super old school camera um well, this is sort of like my trip to explore where photography came from like where it all sort of started you know and um haven't been this stoked about photography for a long time and yeah it's crazy like we're going there only for like two or three shots three photos and uh, that's it so what is wet plate photography and how does it really work? Uh, wet plate photography is a process developed in eight, 1850s and the images are made on platinum plates. The whole process takes about 20 minutes from the start. Uh, it uses silver nitrate to form the tones on the image and it's a really uh, hands-on way to make photos basically like the camera body itself is from the 50s but you sort of like tuned it to yeah, this yeah, date yeah that's right because you can't really like buy all these gears from a store no, and no, go like yo my no. eos our camera is broken just take it to the yeah. shop and <laughs> this lens is from old projector episcope they used in schools to project images i just use this because it's it has a very wide ap aperture so for different situations, you got like separate bodies that you yeah, can change. Yeah, so I can take a different size plate. Right. Before visiting Tuomas at his studio, I never gave that much thought to the process of taking photos. But to hear and learn about the science behind it all really grew my appreciation towards cameras and our ability to take photos. Trying to focus with this is not really the same as it is with the R5. One thing, that is super sort of sketchy is like everything is upside down so obviously you don't really go full on handheld with these things do you? No, no, with, not with wet plate. On sticks, on stance always. Yeah, yeah. I mean I'd love to free ball with this thing but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now this is where I make the images and this is where I make the plate. How long does it actually take to make one still image? Mm, 30 minutes perhaps yeah if i have to be really fast i can do it in like 15 minutes so 10 like minutes. today <laughs> yeah. Yeah. let's say if today taking a taking a single photo with this one photo would take between 15 and 20 minutes i'd probably have to rethink my work process all over again it's like pure magic. Like yeah. though you're there, you know how everything works, but still like. And it's it's pretty interesting to think what the people in the 1850s thought, seeing themselves 
True, true. appearing from nowhere. After hearing all this, I really wanted to give this a go. See the camera and the process in action. Get the hands-on experience from start to finish. Obviously, camera from the 1851. The clothing isn't really, but it's, it's close enough, I think. Step one, preparing the plate. Coat with collodion. Dip in silver nitrate. While we wait for the plate to be ready, we prepare our frame. Everything needs to be right. The lights, the background, direction, the composition, everything. There are literally zero test shots at this. If the lighting is off, we wouldn't be able to see that till the post process of this entire thing. After the photo is developed. So there is zero room for error. Everything needs to be ready before we go in for the take. I mean, with video preparation, I do that. But with photos, the preparation, I hate to say this, but in comparison, what Duomas is doing, me with photos, is sort of lax. Step two, taking the shot. Plate to camera. Expose. It's funny, like, being there, sitting in front of that camera, super nervous. Like, I didn't want to be the one person to ruin that one shot. So I was giving it my all not to play. Oh, yes. <laughs> my freaking eyes. <laughs> Oh my God. Whoa, wasn't expecting that, man. After you've taken your photo, you take the plate immediately to the dark room. Step three, pour on developer. Just like Thomas said, imagine what the people in the 1850s were feeling when they first saw this process come alive. That is exactly how I felt when I saw that photo come into life. Just pure magic. Being in that dark room with the red lights and everything, like it really gave me the feeling of we're creating something amazing here. Like we're doing something big, something unique. Basically, aluminum plate with silver yeah. on top of it. So yeah. if the silver doesn't degrade over time, it's fine. I, I like the aluminum because it's easier to handle and you can break that yeah. so easily than glass. It still feels like magic, sort of, yeah, when know. the photo pops. That's, that's why I got into this. I knew it. I, I knew it. With these modern day cameras, I don't need to worry my head like how the photo here is being developed. It just sort of happens. I could just go into the set or wherever that is that I'm taking photos, hold down the shutter and take 100 photos. Which after watching this old camera and now playing with this, this is pretty darn amazing. But at the same time, I feel like what this has affected is the fact that I'm not putting in the concentration, the focus, like Duomas is giving it to that one shot. Yeah, sure, I can snap photos, fix the lighting as I move forward. Maybe a little bit backlight. Oh, the subject wasn't this and that. My directions weren't that good. Not really put that much effort in the preparation of the shoot. I could just easily always rely on, hey, we snapped like thousand photos of it. I bet there's at least one good frame and we'll just fix it in post. Really give that one shot everything. As if that was the only shot I got to take for the next 15 and 20 minutes. And not just rely on the fact that you took gazillion photos, you got it covered. Maybe that would level up my game in photography. Who knows? If you could say one thing, what has this taught you as a photographer? There are a lot of things, maybe kind of seeing the image right from the start, trusting that kind of instinct you have what to do. That, that's usually the right one. I'm really glad that I got to visit Tuomas over at his studio. Learning how these photos were taken back in the day really gave me some new perspective to all this, to photography. 
Oh yeah, also a day later, I did receive the actual Ochi Play 2 mail, which is amazing because I rarely print out any of my own work. To hold this plate and to know that this used to be sort of plank, nothing, and with our hands, we created a photo on this, feels pretty cool. Just looking at the edges of the frame and when it's not like even, it's all done with that process, it, it, yeah, still blows my mind. We almost even asked, hey, Joey, do you wanna get rid of that fingerprint that was left there to that bottom right corner? And I said, please just leave it there. I think it's pretty cool. It's like an artist's signature. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. Really hope you got something out of it like I did. You can let me know in the comments below. Now, I wanna thank you for watching and as always, I'll be seeing you guys again on the next one.